1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Our Chaplain's Report today, we're going to be continuing in the book of 1 Samuel like we have been for quite some time now. We've actually been in the book of Samuel for a while. But we're about halfway through. We're in Samuel chapter 14. And just so you know what's going on here, if you haven't been keeping up with the Chaplain's Report every day. So this little episode that we're about to look at, the Philistines have essentially been defeated. They're fleeing in every direction because of something that Jonathan did. He came up and tried to negotiate with them. And probably by providence, I think that there's no other way to explain it. The Philistines became terrified, thinking that Jonathan was hiding a whole bunch of men in, in holes there in the hills that he was coming out of. And they freaked out and ran. <laughs> Uh, so this happens, and the Philistines have been largely defeated. They're still pursuing some of their forces, but basically Israel's already won the day. Everybody's celebrating. Everybody's happy. They are now pursuing their enemies, but the, the Philistines are in full retreat, and Israel has basically already run the battle. They're just trying to follow up here. And when King Saul orders all of the men to pursue after them, he makes this oath where he says that, if any man eats before sunset, let him be accursed until I have prevailed over my enemies. I think there's a couple reasons why that's a mistake. One of it is it kind of puts the Otis on King Saul to a degree. Like, I, I'm not saying that this is full-on sinful, and I think it's at least questionable. I think it's in murky water, I guess is the best way to describe it. I'm not sure if this would be... It's hard to gauge exactly what was in Saul's heart at the time. But either way, Saul has essentially made it about himself, that they are going to fast and, and all the men that are in his company are not going to eat anything until the sun goes down. By the way, that was Jewish tradition. You don't fast from morning till evening. You don't fast from the time you wake up until the time you go to bed. You actually fast uh, from night to night because that's how the Jews measured time. The day actually started uh, at, at sundown, not at, you know, that's just how they count time. But anyway... So Saul goes ahead and he says, until the sun sets, nobody's to eat any food. And then the military goes on to pursue the Philistines. And Jonathan, remember, was off doing his own thing. In fact, he's the reason that the Philistines are fleeing in the first place is because he was apart from the rest of the people. He went off to, to meet with them on his own. And so Jonathan wasn't there when this proclamation takes place. He and his armor bearer are there by themselves. And so they catch up to the, the Israel army later but they weren't there when Saul made this proclamation. He didn't know that, and so there's been some honey that has been dripping there in the forest or the woods or however you want to describe it as they're pursuing the Philistines. He hadn't caught up with the Israelites yet, and so he, not knowing that this oath had happened or that all these people had, had made this command, he just dips down there and, and takes a bit of the honey. And so this is really where we pick up on this episode in the life of Saul and Jonathan in 1 Samuel 14, verses 28 through 30. Then one of the people said, Your father strictly put the people under an oath, saying, Cursed, is the, uh, cursed be the man who eats food today. And the people were weary. And Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. See now how my eyes have brightened because I have take, tasted a little of this honey. How much more... If only the people had eaten freely today of the spoil and of their enemies, which they found. For now the slaughter among the Philistines has not been great. This is actually a pretty interesting little episode. And there is some spiritual wisdom in here, but I think there's also some, some physical wisdom here as well. First of all, we're going to go to the big universal truth. I think that's a good place to start here. And that is, you can't hold people accountable for what they don't know. You can't hold people accountable for what they don't know. I'm sure that Jonathan, if nothing else, out of respect for his father, and in this case, from a military perspective, the, the, the respect of his captain, probably would have abided by these rules if he had known that. He wasn't doing this as a, an act of defiance or disobedience or anything like that. He just 
didn't know that this was taking place. He was not with the men when this happened, and so he did this act out of ignorance. He didn't know that that was something that was against the rules. And so from a moral perspective, I think one thing that it illustrates is that you can't be held accountable for what you don't know. Now, on the larger, grander scale, things that you should have been able to figure out, that's a different story, but this was sort of a random, arbitrary rule. And remember, this was not a command from God. This was not something of moral significance. This was just sort of an idea that Saul had on a whim. Which illustrates another universal truth, that there is a profound difference in the words of man and the words of God. So, if I were in this same scenario, and I defied my father, especially if I were a young kid or something like that, but even today, like, if I just disrespected my father or my mother, if I, if I were guilty of the sin of disrespecting my parents, that would definitely be wrong because God told me not to. But if it were something random and arbitrary and I didn't know that they had made that command, that wouldn't be something that you could hold against me. Because I just didn't know. I'm not a mind reader, and, and maybe they just hadn't communicated it clearly or whatever. That's something that you can't hold against a person because that's a human-made commandment. A God-made commandment is a little different. And so that's one of the universal truths that it illustrates is that you can't hold Jonathan accountable for him not knowing that Saul had already made this oath. And so when he goes ahead and does this, you know, Jonathan is essentially held blameless when that takes place. But it also illustrates a secondary truth. Because you'll notice that one of the things that Jonathan is saying is, you know, our slaughter of the Philistines has not been great. Think about this. And Jonathan is pretty much the sole reason, of course, with God's help, but Jonathan is pretty much the sole reason the Philistines are even in full retreat. And what does he make note of there when he hears about this oath? He says, wait, Dad really told everybody that no one's allowed to eat until the day's over? Do you notice that I'm in good spirits and my eyes have been lighted up? And in other words, that's sort of like a sign of vitality or whatever. He says, and our slaughter of the Philistines hasn't been all that great since this took place. What Jonathan is essentially saying is the men are hungry. And obviously a marching army pursuing enemies is kind of a physically demanding thing. And maybe part of the reason that that is taking place is because King Saul foolishly said, nobody eats until the end of the day. Well, you can see why that would be problematic. Now, there's nothing wrong with fasting. In fact, the Bible talks quite a bit about fasting, and I think, frankly, it's something that a lot of modern Christians have forgotten how to do and don't really do nearly as much as we ought to. So, this isn't an anti-fasting story. But what it is illustrating is that there's a time and a place. That there are certain times where fasting, of course, would be very good. When you're a soldier chasing down the enemy through the field, probably not a great time to go on a hunger strike. <laughs> and that's what Jonathan is sort of bringing up here. He's like, maybe if, if we had been able to eat something, the men wouldn't be so tired, we wouldn't be hungry, we would be a little bit better at our jobs. This was a decision by Saul, a man that is charged with the lives of the men that he is leading, that put them in danger. This is something that could literally cost lives because the men are hungry and tired and haven't been able to eat, and they need that energy to be able to fight who they're going to fight. And Jonathan, even though it is his father, and even though I'm sure he respects him and would do whatever he said, in under normal circumstances, he's saying, this is a bad idea. Look at how tired and hungry the men are. Look how we've not been able to do our jobs because of this. And so the purpose of fasting is very clear here. It's something that is done for spiritual enrichment, but there are times where fasting wouldn't necessarily be appropriate. By the way, this is a New Testament concept too. You may recall that the Pharisees and the judges of the law were actually asking Jesus, hey, why is it that your disciples just don't fast? And that would have been something that for a religious person of Jesus' time would have been pretty weird. And so the question isn't without merit, but you remember what Jesus' answer was? He says, how are they supposed to fast when the bridegroom is with them? You know, just like Jesus being with the disciples, which of course would be cause for celebration, a time for merriment, then here we see right here 
that God has basically, through providence, granted Israel a big victory. Not through their own merits, but through God's providence, through Jonathan. And he basically already set the table for them. That's not a good time to fast either. This is a time of celebration. This is a time where they're going to have to have that energy to be able to do what what they would presumably need to do to chase down the Philistines. And yet Saul declares a fast. Well, every indication that we're given here is that this is a really bad time for a fast. Nothing wrong with fasting. Fasting, good. But there's a time and a place for it. And there's certain times where it's actually not appropriate, and this is a pretty good illustration of that. But I think ultimately one thing that it illustrates is that even when we have good intention, impulsiveness, not a great leadership trait. Flying off the handle, coming up with things as you go along, just kind of spitting things out as they pop into your head, not a great thing for a leader to do. And, you know, to be fair, Saul has already made some mistakes here this day. We already saw the episode where he went ahead and, and offered the sacrifice, even though that he, he wasn't supposed to. But in all fairness... I don't think Saul meant anything bad by this. And, you know, from a spiritual standpoint, maybe he even meant it to be something that we could do basically to show our dedication or our gratitude or something. But that's not the purpose of fasting. And I think that maybe Saul missed that in all of this, in in this confusion. And he kind of just, on the spur of the moment, decided this was something that all the men were going to do. But impulsiveness is not a great leadership trait. Intelligence, calculation, wisdom... These are all traits that define a great leader. And there were times where Saul kind of displayed that, but this is not one of those times. And I think, at least partially his fault, partially where he went wrong, is where he started to make it all about him. This day when I will conquer and I will overcome my enemies, then everybody can eat again. Mm, That seems like you're making fasting, which is supposed to be a spiritual dedication to God, really a lot more about you, and it it almost seems like you're treating God like a cosmic gumball machine. Like, if we do this thing, maybe God will give us great success, and that's the wrong-headed kind of attitude to have. So, ultimately, I think what it goes back to is, whatever you're doing in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, make sure you're actually doing it for Him. Make sure that when you do something, because there are some things, spiritual things, that uh, it may not be a good idea to fast around either. I know personally, and I don't want to get too personal here, But uh, when I'm about to do a big sermon or something like that, that's not a time of fasting for me. I might fast in preparation of the sermon, but the actual delivery of it, I could get distracted by being hungry. And so I can't fast when, you know, I'm about to step up to the podium. Maybe I fast to get a little bit spiritually more deep in preparation for it. So when I'm planning it and, and doing my research, I might fast then, but I'm definitely not doing it when I'm getting up in front of people to speak. Because I've already learned through experience that's not a good thing to do. And so it's important to be wise and to take judgment and assessment as it comes to you and and judge those things on a case-by-case basis. I think that's a lesson that Saul and and really all of Israel learned from this episode. That's going to be our show for this week. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll be back next week. Stay the course, friends. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.